Hello there and welcome to my latest podcast. I suspect a great many of you out there are conflicted by the problems of COVID and the ability to travel. Many will be asking, should I stay or should I go? Since last summer, I have been asked across the airwaves as to what my predictions were. And indeed, this time last year, I did warn that summer may not happen. Indeed, for a great number of people, summer was very much a stay-at-home affair with day trips taken to quench that thirst to get away. In truth, it is difficult to predict what might happen next, but I am not one of those media commentators who will shy away from the question of prediction. In order to make any kind of prediction, you have to research and listen. Once you have all the facts, you can perhaps make an educated guess, but with the caveat that COVID is not yet done with us. And so the travel prediction circus has moved on from the uncertain days of 2020 and into the territory of vaccines. The great hope that one day soon we shall all be set free. A clarion call for freedom reaches a daily crescendo through the airways from vociferous broadcasters rallying a freedom populism without, it seems, any element of caution and from some politicians who carry bottles of milk around with them as a symbol or a comfort blanket for that lost world. The issue of vaccine availability has become nationalistic and toxic, locked, it seems, into the reality, deviance and failures of contract. Trust has been weakened by the UK's own approach to the Brexit problem, which has locked European and UK nations into a protectionist dialogue, which signs that a similar process is at play in the United States. The holidaymaker and travel company could be forgiven for being confused with so many non-consensual voices competing to be heard. A good example of this is found in the debate on vaccine passports. In November last year, I cited them as not just being a possibility, but a coming reality. By the beginning of the year, I was also raising the issue of potential discrimination arising from their introduction. In a reaction to this growing crisis and growing awareness, it was apparent that some international bodies had some reservations, whilst the commercial world moved at a swift pace to design their own passports. UK ministers dismissed the concept out of hand, and EU politicians recognised the growing need and sought to design a system that would be fair. Several months later, the UK government has delivered an about-face and is now appearing to suggest that hospitality outlets might want to consider them. Hello? Discrimination? A split society? Does this not concern you, Minister? When I have raised the issue on the airwaves, I have experienced a palpable recoiling from the subject matter, because in order to combat any potential discrimination, you have to use the tools that protect human rights and seek a temporary derogation from those international rights and obligations. You'd have thought that this was a matter of public interest, marking a clear pathway of the road ahead, whilst carrying with us our fellow citizens. Instead, what I see ahead is a great deal of anger and litigation and the creation of difficult choices for many families in the months ahead. So that's pretty much the background of what's going on right now. And into the mix of predictions, there is the reality of vaccine availability, vaccine rollout programmes, and of course, variants. These factors are mixed in with countries desperately reliant on tourism seeking to create the opportunity for the vaccinated to come across and visit them. But that desire 
will have to be balanced with the reality of vaccines, along with their own population's needs and being able to protect their own health systems. One concern through all of this has been the reaction of the newspapers to the so-called positive news of borders and airports opening. The red tops have screamed out that it is time to get away. Some travel companies have fallen over themselves to encourage consumers to book, and consumers part with their monies. Then the wind changes, and everyone is in full reverse thrust, with some travel commentators crying out how unfair all of this is to an industry. This travel commentator knows of one major company who has, much to their own cost, not been seduced by political words and have held back from the promotion of their wares. Holidaymakers in the meantime are potentially trapped within the refund vortex. Last week, I was asked to speak at an international conference on cabin air quality. One speaker in our section was a representative of the international airline industry. When asked whether the earlier predictions of a return to 2019 passenger and traffic levels in 2022 still stood, they responded that their predictions had now shifted to 2025 to 2026. Ouch! But this is the metric or barometer that politicians, newspapers and broadcasters are failing to understand. If they did, their own rhetoric might be tempered. But failing to listen to words and the subtlety of words causes misunderstanding and frustration in all the commentators and indeed amongst consumers as to the way ahead. A case in fact is found in the exchange between the Labour politician Yvette Cooper and Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister. There was a testy exchange the other day about testing those who arrive into the UK and the failure to do so. In the midst of this exchange, Johnson made the following comments. And that has to be balanced against the current ambiguity about the effectiveness of the vaccines on the variants. Now, was that comment extracted and analysed? Were broadcasters jumping up and down, probing Johnson and his ministers? Heck no. It begs the question, have we ourselves been seduced by the word vaccine? Do we understand its interplay and limitations in this COVID crisis? Have we become too triumphant in our apparent success? So these are the considerations I make when I am asked to make predictions for getting away for that 2021 summer holiday abroad. Now I could take the easy way out and claim it's difficult to predict, or I could make an educated guess, because otherwise my commentary may have no value at all to any radio or press that I speak with. So here is my prediction for the prospect of a 2021 foreign holiday. So all things considered, if nations stop squabbling, vaccine passports and potential discrimination is resolved, and pharma companies actually deliver the vaccines, then the picture may change. The key is the next two months. With a fair wind and a quick resolution of problems, the landscape could change. Now that said, the earliest that I would expect a return, and when I say return, it will be a limited return with restrictions, will be at the end of July, beginning of August this year. But do not expect to see a great availability or a wide destination choice. It will be a slow growth, but it will be growth. But, and this is the big but, and this is my caveat to all of this, such a prediction will only come to pass if the problems I've talked about get resolved and, more importantly, that we all recognise that COVID is not yet done with us. So my prediction, such as it is, is cautionary, but it informs the consumer what to look out for. Far more useful, I would say, 
than some of the nonsense across some of the airwaves and indeed found in some newspapers. But here's another prediction. Pretty obvious one, really, but here it is. The winner in the 2021 holiday stakes will be the staycation. Why? Well, that is due to the change picture here in the UK, but with that nagging variance issue in the background and the efficacy of any vaccine. That's the caveat. So when I look at the cons of travel abroad from the consumer perspective, I would state that they would include some of the following. They are concerned about being trapped in a refund vortex. They need reassurance and transparency. They're concerned about their redundancies or the potential for redundancy. Unfamiliarity of foreign destination rules on health and so on. There are expressions of concern about the liquidity of some travel companies, for example, package holiday companies. Consumers have a fear of mixing and being in large all-inclusive complexes. They also fear using shared facilities. So you take that and you balance it against the staycation. So whereas the attraction of consumers taking the staycation, I think these uh, positives could be summarised as follows. The attraction and understanding of the importance of the familial or close friend bubbles. They will see self-catering as safe, clean and with a sense that the well-being of guests have been considered they are looking for the priority of reassurance. Familiarity is key, either through holidaying in the UK or indeed at a foreign destination they know well. Through self-catering, they would have familiarity of rules, of health systems and indeed of processes. Self-catering potentially allows them to relax in the bubble. Self-catering allows them to make decisions about day trips and locations as opposed to the all-inclusive sense of being trapped in a location. Now, it may be a different holiday, but it carries forward the way they, the consumers, have kept themselves and their families safe within their own defined UK bubble. They have control of the space in much the same way as they do in their own homes. Going forward into 2022 and beyond, it introduces the fresh perspective of what they may want in the future from any holiday experience. It all sounds very positive. But the isolation and disjunct of consumers and those who control the narrative presents many challenges and indeed confusion. But in the end, whatever the ambiguity or any of the predictions, Consumers will continue to act cautiously and will generally make decisions that keeps them and their loved ones safe. Until the next time, take care.